It's finally here! And it's terrible. Hello Tube Dwellers and welcome. I'm the Arcadian and this is Mabinogidio. Today's deck features Mermaid Size at long last, a card that's been requested over the last couple of weeks and which I used to have a lot of fun with back in the day when it first came out. However, in recent testing, what I've discovered is that the meta has moved along and left Mermaid Size in the dust. She was never that powerful to begin with, and she's even weaker now than she used to be, unfortunately. So, what I thought we'd do is a slightly different video. Rather than showing the deck, doing a couple of fights and finish, we'll turn this into more of a showcase on Mermaid Size herself, her strengths and her many, many weaknesses. So... Let's take a look at the deck, and then we'll go more in-depth into the card herself. First of all, what you'll notice is that we are using a dual-color deck, mana and dark. This is because size has enough problems, she really doesn't need to add resource juggling on top of them all. Alright, so we'll begin at the beginning with Black Spirit. One cost, mana creature, he's really just there to buy us some time in the early game. Next, we have the Mana Book of Knowledge, because you want to ramp up to level 2 as quickly as possible. And obviously that's the best way of doing it. Next is Free Summon, very useful for shutting down tricksy little cards like Jure, Goblin Chieftain, you know, Triss or Perry, all this sort of thing. But also very handy for charging up Nerva's energy. Then we have the... If it comes up, there we go. <laughs> the Bullet of Illusion, a one-cost mana removal spell that generally I don't advise anybody to ever use, simply because in almost every instance Magic Missile is better. However, in this particular case, Bullet of Illusion has an advantage that Magic Missile doesn't, namely that it ignores defense. So what that means is that when Size pulls petrified creatures onto our side of the field, Bullet of Illusion can bypass the petrified creature's defense, and kill them, thereby transforming them back into their original form. Same sort of thing goes for Notira's Needle. Very good offensive spell in its own right, but in this particular case we'll be using it more for removing the petrification of creatures, and the fact that it uh, gives you Dark Resource back as well, very handy. Uh -huh, no, sorry, no duels right now. Then we have the Ritual of Darkness, another low-cost spell whose uh, purpose is really to just remove the petrification. Now be aware that because petrified creatures technically have no summoning cost, Ritual will not give you any resources. However, it is still a very, very cheap and effective way of removing petrification. And it can also be useful for clearing out your side of the field if you want to pull more petrified creatures over, or if you've managed to capture a creature that actually benefits from being ritualed, like Jurgen. So, kind of a tricksy card, can be used quite well. Next up, we have the Dark Card Appraiser. Now, this is more, again, like a tank, like the Black Spirit. However, it can also be very useful for clearing petrified creatures off your opponent's side of the field if you don't want to capture them. Maybe size has already died, or, you know, it's a petrified creature that you don't really care about. Uh, card Appraiser can remove it. If you have a second Stone Curse in your binder, then you could replace Card Appraiser with that, and that might be a better idea. But give it a try and see what works out best for you. Next up we have Petrify, because it's one of the best ways of allowing size to capture a creature, and it also shuts down your opponent's side of the field quite well. If they've just got a bunch of statues there, it obviously severely limits what they can do. Exactly the same thing with Stone Curse. Uh, this is going to be where the majority of your dark resource usage, usage comes from. Play this early, play this often. You really want to have your opponent's field just shut down with petrified creatures, ideally, before you bring size out. Speaking of which, Mermaid Size herself, we'll go into more detail on her at the end of this uh, little analysis. Then Witch Xena, she works very well next to Nerva. Her hypnosis also allows uh, Size to pull uh, hypnotized creatures onto your side of the field, and she's just excellent at shutting down enemies in general. So, useful to have. You'll generally be using her either as an alternative to Petrification and Stone Curse, or as kind of a late-game uh, cleanup crew. 
And then finally, we have Seeker Nerva, because you really need to protect size and Xena from spells. And with all of the transformation going on, Nerva's energy is just going to skyrocket if you're playing it right. Okay, so that's the deck. Now, normally the decks that I showcase are very powerful. You can take them up into platinum, no particular problems, and so on and so forth. However, any deck that contains mermaid size is going to be extremely weak. Unfortunately, because, again, unfortunately, Mermaid Size herself is very, very weak. And we'll go into why now. So, for a starter, you can see that she costs 3, 4, and 5 resources. It's not massively expensive, but you do need to look at that next to her attack and health values. Her attack is 1, 2, 3, which is terrible, just awful. She is never going to kill any creature, so don't use her as an offense. And she's not going to be doing much damage to your opponent either, so... Ignore the, ignore the attack. Uh, she's not an attack card. Next, her health and defense values. Now, combine those two together, and it's referred to as effective HP. Um, so <clears throat> at level 1, she has an effective HP of 6. Uh, at level 2, an effective HP of 10. And at level 3, an effective HP of 14. Now, because of the way the defense works, sometimes you'll get lucky, she'll get hit, the defense won't all get taken off. Uh, but since it's random, you have to assume that any hit will take off that amount of defense. So we will say that she has 6, 10, and 14 health. Now, what this means is that while she is immune to the one cost removal spells, she is not immune at any level to the two cost removal spells. So at any time in the game, your opponent can remove size for less than you spent to summon her, which is never good. She has no offensive presence and she has no defensive presence. You need to guard her against both creatures and spells. All right, so that's the first problem. The second problem with size is that when you look at her ability, what she is effectively is a less good Urgent Arrest, which is a C1 collaboration card that works much like Capture, except it also reduces your uh, target's health value. So, She's an inferior Urgent Arrest, and Urgent Arrest is arguably an inferior Capture. But unlike Urgent Arrest and Capture, which are simply one action, one move, and then you've got the card, size requires a lot of steps. So let's look at what you need to do in order to make size activate. First of all, you need to play size on your turn. And she needs to survive to your next turn, because her ability will only activate at the beginning of the turn. Next, you need to transform one of your opponent's creatures by, uh, and, and you do have to transform. Um, you could try to use combinations like Xena and Hexta and so on and so forth, but at that point the combo gets even worse. So the best way of re reducing the health and attack of your opponent, which is what she needs in order to activate, is to use a transformation spell, of which that will do what you need. There are only five. There's Cocoon Trap, Cocoon of Evolution, Stone Curse, Petrify, and Hypnotize. As far as I'm aware, those are the only five cards in the game that will reduce both attack and hit points down to the level that size requires. So, you have to play size. Then you have to either transform your opponent's creature or you have to play a trap anticipating that they are going to summon a creature that is going to be worth capturing. Then, on your opponent's turn, your opponent has to not kill size, which again is very easy to do, remember, and if you have transformed or uh, one of your opponent's creatures successfully, your opponent has to not neutralize that in some way. Now, a lot of people are carrying rituals, so if you petrify a creature, they'll probably be able to just ritual it right back out again, or just use a removal spell and undo what you've done. But, Let's say that your opponent does not manage to kill size and they do not manage to uh, somehow untransform or remove the transformed creature from their side of the field. Then at the beginning of your turn, size will in fact capture that transformed creature, which is great, except now you have a transformed creature on your side of the field, which is as useless to you as it was to your opponent. So you need to turn it back. If you're using Cocoon or Cocoon Trap, the only way to turn it back would be to use a um, Mirror of Truth, which is really unreliable, and I really don't advise doing that. If you're using Hypnotize and you need to cast a spell on the creature, but in that case you really don't want to be using any high damage spells or any damage spells at all, ideally, which means that you need a single target 
self-buffing spell in your hand, which again, generally not that useful. Or you can go with petrification, in which case you can use a removal spell in the way that we're using it. However, that does still cost you a card, or an action and a card, obviously. So, at this point, in order to capture an enemy creature, we have played size, we have played a card in order to capture the creature, we have had to ensure in some way that size and the transformed creature will not die on our opponent's turn. Then on our turn, we have to use a further action in order to transform the creature back to where it needs to be in order to be useful to us. That is four separate steps, all of which needs to go absolutely perfectly, or you simply won't be able to, to use size, and you will have wasted all that time and all that resource on nothing. <clears throat> so... This is why most people don't see, don't, don't run size and why you don't see it in the arenas. Uh, for its effect, which is basically capture, it requires so many things to work. Now, the one thing that size does better than capture is that if you do manage to get through this entire sequence of events, you will be left at the end with a creature that does still have its original attack value, which can be useful depending on the card that you have captured. Now, you can still do the same kind of thing for less steps with Capture itself. If you play to Capture and then use the Phantom of the Wolf or any of the other attack buffing cards that are available in the game. But nevertheless, as part of Size's sequence, you do end up with a fully healed, um, full attack value creature on your side of the field. But is that enough to make you want to use Size? That's really up to you. Personally, I wouldn't advise it, but if you really, really want to make it work, I'm sure there are ways. It took me hours, personally, in order to create a deck that had any chance of success, but if you really like her, be aware of those uh, little caveats and see what you can do about it. As for us, we will dive into one of the very few victories that I had with this deck, uh, and uh, we'll see how the actual uh, playstyle of size goes when everything does work properly. Let's jump in. Okay, so we're fighting a PvP first Dan, which means that it's, uh, it's an equal fight, generally, uh, using a hero that I've been seeing more often recently, although still not commonly. So she's using Nature Mana Dark with one Mutant, and we start, so we play the Black Spirit. You don't want to play the Book of Knowledge initially because then they know what you're doing, they know that you're trying to ramp. This way there's no uh, pressure on them, so there's more chance you'll be able to get it uh, done. She Magic Missiles, which is not great for us normally, except uh, because it puts her into the lead experience-wise, uh, but we have the Book of Knowledge, so we don't really care. Also, this is really nice, just being able to watch footage and just go, oh yeah, I remember that, uh, all this nightmare. <laughs> so, uh, we level up to two. She does the same thing. She dropped a, uh, a green trap, so we have to assume it's like Ambush Vine or Hidden Spider. We charge up and we drop the Stone Curse, because again, play it early, play it often, you really want the Stone Curse out as quickly as possible. Also, it means that she thinks that we're charging up towards Dark, so she's probably expecting a Jurgen or a Mino or something like that, which is going to force her to bring out a creature to try to rush us down. Unfortunately, she just discarded Mana, which invariably means a counter spell, uh, which in this case it did. Uh, so that's unfortunate because it means that we don't just, you know, snag a gen immediately. However, we do still have enough resources for a Petrify, so that's what we use. Because Jen is uh, actually a pretty good card for us to have. This is a very defensive playstyle with size. You really do want to ensure that uh, you're playing defensively, and Jen is actually uh, good for that. Also, her ghosts that she summons is going to be handy for our uh, dark resource if we can actually get them to activate. So we drop Stone Curse back into the grave, even though we don't quite have the resources for it yet, but we're anticipating the future. And charge up a little bit more in order to get up to level three, because if we end up bringing out, uh, well, if we end up, we are going to bring out Nerva. But if we also end up bringing out uh, Xena, we want everybody to be at level three, if possible, just uh, increases the survivability of everybody. 
<sighs> okay. So at this point, uh, I'm thinking, you know, do I want to go more offensive or not? And I de decide to just continue to stay defensive. <clears throat> Don't drop any free summons um, at the same time as you've dropped Stone Curse, because they will both activate. So Elf comes out, Stone Curse activates, but unfortunately that was a counterspell again, and that also activates. So we're kind of shutting each other down in terms of uh, Grave Cost and cards. I can't really use Stone Curse anymore, but she can't really use Counterspell anymore. So... It all balances out. At this point, I wasn't sure whether to bring out Nerva or not, but I decided to be a little bit bold. Uh, brought her out. Ambush Vine activates, but it doesn't matter because Nerva is all about her ability anyway. <clears throat> and then uh, I thought, okay, we'll be a little bit bold. We'll drop Free Summon in there as kind of an anticipatory for the future, but we'll use the resources now in order to summon size. Her resources are not so great that I'm think that she can use two high-powered removal spells. So she goes for the eagle uh, in order to hit size, and it swaps places with the elf, which mm, it's not ideal, uh, really. Uh, it would have been better if the eagle had you know, jumped in front of Nerva or something like that, but We'll make do. Size at least survives, and our opponent doesn't undo the petrification. So Size does manage to steal Jen, which is fantastic. At this point, uh, we go for uh, the ritual <coughs> to remove the, uh, the the petrification, and Jen pops right back out. Now, No Tears Needle would probably have been uh, better at... Uh, at would have been a better choice, but at this point, I think I was like four hours in and halfway up the wall. <laughs> so, Jen gets the, uh, the shot off because, again, as part of Size's sequence, we do actually end up with a Jen with a full attack value. <clears throat> That's nice. Now, the Eagle is going to get its attack off, which is unfortunate, and the Elf is going to kill Size, which, again, is unfortunate, but Jen has a really good shot at summoning a ghost in front of both the Eagle and the Elf. However, this Phantom of the Wolf um, causes problems. The Free Summon activates, which is nice because it charges up Nerva. However, <clears throat> it also means that at the end of the turn, the Eagle and the Elf and the, uh, the Ambush Vine are all going to be supercharged. Normally, I'd focus on taking down the Phantom of the Wolf, but in this case, it has to be the Eagle, because if our opponent does manage to remove the Ghost, if she throws out like two quick spells to drain Nereva and then uh, kills the ghost. Between the eagle and the phantom of the wolf, we're in fatal range. So we absolutely have to kill the eagle. Unfortunately, we don't have anything that deals uh, enough damage to immediately eliminate the eagle. So we have to kind of heavily invest uh, resource-wise at this point. You see me thinking, oh, is there any other way I can do this? But unfortunately, there isn't. So we have to throw out the Bullet of Illusion and then the Notira's Needle. Strong overcommitting on the resources there, but it wasn't worth risking Fatal for. This is a very, very defensive deck. And fortunately, with Jen being on the field, we've got a decent chance of her summoning uh, ghosts to block uh, the enemy creatures. However, you can see that our resources are not good, especially when compared to our opponents. She can't cast any spells, which is good for us, but she does seem to be running uh, a low-cost chip damage deck, which is problematic for this deck to deal with because of size relying on stealing creatures. Uh, stealing these low-value minions is not too useful, and she managed to shut down our petrifications quite handily. So, we drop Stone Curse into the field uh, in order to charge up for Card Appraiser, knowing that we can leave Stone Curse in there for later, provided the gen doesn't drag it back out into our hand. But we have a lot of cards uh, in the grave, so odds are in our favor. Card Appraiser uh, can deal with her deck fairly well. She seems to be running mostly 0 to 1 star cards, so Card Appraiser has a chance of uh, eliminating any of those. He'll die to the Phantom of the Wolf, but hopefully he'll take out something valuable valuable in the interim. So again, Vampire Zero Star card. Card Appraiser has a chance of removing that. Drains the life from Jen, but we don't really care about that because Jen can't be killed <coughs> via damage while she has her ghosts on the field. And our ghosts are now pretty well protected uh, because Nerva's got um, her 
uh, energy nice and high. So card appraiser disappears the vampire, which is fantastic. And you can see that he's also going to continue charging up our dark resources, which is going to put us within range for both stone curse and Xena. So we charge up, just trying to desperately regain uh, a little bit of uh, resource footing. Jen continues to deal damage. <clears throat> The card appraiser gives us a little bit more dark. Now, the wolf is about to kill the card appraiser, which is unfortunate. Um, it would have been nice to keep him around, but so it goes. Eagle comes out, but is snagged by that free summon that we dropped earlier in anticipation, which again charges up Nerva, which is fantastic, and prevents Eagle's ability from activating. So, the card appraiser and one of the ghosts goes down. Eagle is summoned, but there's no threat there to Jen. She can deal with that no problem and now we actually have enough resources for Xena so we'll throw her down now they kind of war over um, graves uh, both Xena and Jen require uh, cards in the grave so we're going to drop the free summon hoping that neither of the two bring it out um, because if we can just continue to charge up there that would be good but if they do bring the free summon out it's not too crucial at this point in the game and if they do drag it out, then we can simply revive from our grave, and then we have the uh, we will have a lot more cards back in our hand, and we can possibly even bring out size if we decide to start petrifying more creatures. But with Jen being on the field, it's not too necessary. So Xena activates, uh, nobbles the uh, eagle. The elf would have been nicer for us, but uh, uh, it's it's not the end of the world. <clears throat> so we drag all of that out. Uh, of our grave because now we're in a situation where we're actually going to need to have some more cards in our hand i'm looking at the uh, the wolf and i'm thinking this guy really needs to be taken out pretty fast so we use notira's needle which puts it within ko range for xena which is good for us and was quite necessary and, uh, and and i'll drop a second card in there so that both xena and jen can activate on the following turn <clears throat> so yes we needed that dealt with because with us down at 8 HP if the elf had managed to get through somehow that would immediately have killed us so we've eliminated all in one fell swoop quite a lot of her board she can't cast any spells she can only summon creatures but she's worried about our free summon which does in fact come out uh, and she's worried about um, Xena's hypnosis so, she summons the shadow person in front of Xena, which is, yeah, her best shot, really. Uh, the vampire comes out. Now, the vampire is going to kill Nerva at this point, which is something we really, really don't want to happen because she's got a lot of energy right now and is doing really well for us. So, we need to take the vampire down uh, within KO range. We can't kill it outright. So, instead, we're going to have to use a bullet of illusion to take it down to a point where Z uh, Nerva rather can deal with it. However, that means that we are now not doing too well for resources. Uh, and um, Jen didn't activate because our free summon activated. Uh, that only left us with enough cards in the grave for Xena to work. Still, we're not doing too badly. Uh, the hypnotized creature is out there nicely in no man's land. It's not going to be taking any damage, which means that Xena is now safe, uh, which Jen should be able to summon uh, next turn because both me and my opponent have cards in our grave. And, well, and she just removed it, so that's unfortunate for Jen. But uh, you can see that this is partially the way that this um, deck works. Okay, so the vampire comes out and drags it. But yeah, it's partially the way the deck works is by forcing your opponent to hurt themselves. Um, we have a lot of ways of dealing with enemy creatures, and uh, we can shut down spells completely, which means that we can just keep killing the creatures. She's got to keep reviving out of the grave, which obviously hurts her. It's, um, it's a very defensive deck. It's very much a why-are-you-hitting-yourself kind of deck. So, at this point, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, we really, really don't want that vampire to kill Nerva. She's doing so well right now. So, we discard size uh, in order to give us enough resources to cast the uh, Bullet of Illusion. Bullet of Illusion comes out. 
little lag there. Okay, so the Bullet of Illusion comes out. It deals a little bit of damage. Notira's Needle comes up next in order to take him down to uh, KO range. Now, that drops us, unfortunately, all the way down to zero resources. However, she is already revived from her grave numerous times. She has a lot of grave cost on a lot of cards. So the Eagle comes out, deals damage to Nerva. That's really unfortunate. So Nerva goes down, which opens us up to spells. However, that cost her all of her nature resources. And she has no mana and no darkness, really. Certainly not enough to cast two removal spells, which is what she would need in order to prevent us from dealing fatal damage. So at this point, she's thinking about it, but it's uh, it becomes quickly obvious to her that there's nothing she can do at this point, unfortunately for her. So she just has to charge. Uh, we hypnotize the eagle, Jen summons the ghost, I assume they just wanted to rub it in, uh, and Xena lands the finishing blow after a long, drawn-out, highly defensive battle. But that's the way you got to play if you want to make size work. And that was Mermaid Size. As you can see, when things go well, it can be an extremely powerful card and can absolutely shut down your opponent's uh, game plan. However, everything going perfectly is by no means a guaranteed condition. So be aware that if you are going to be running Mermaid Size, it really needs to be for fun. This is not a top 10 kind of card. Still, if you would like to give this deck a run or uh, modify it for your own use, there's a share code up in the top right hand corner and best of luck with it. So that's it from me. Thank you for watching and a special thank you to everyone who subscribed so far. Until next time, have fun and good luck.